Remember when I promised to take a break from Mando content? That's what made you- you did! I lied. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars The Mandalorian lore video. I keep thinking that I'm done covering this show, but then I have another idea for a video that I want to make. And today we'll be talking about the most recent episode of The Mandalorian. So of course, spoilers there and also spoilers, I guess, for my speculations, although I don't think I'm that on point. I also have to be a little bit honest with this video. Some of what I'll be talking about came from a conversation that I had with another person. I think it was Corey on the podcast that I do tap cap transmissions, but I can't quite remember. So I'm not trying to steal anyone's thunder here, anyone's idea. And if I can find the source of that comment, I'll make sure to pin it and also mention it in a future video. With that being said, let's talk about the Mandalorian. In chapter 13 of the Mandalorian, Ahsoka tells Din Djarin and of course the child to go visit the planet Tython. On Tython, there's a mountain at the top of which is a seeing stone, which will help the child figure out their destiny. If he reaches out with the force, a Jedi may come to him and presumably offer training. Now, there's a lot to talk about there. I mean, which Jedi? Could it be Luke Skywalker or Cal Kestis or somebody else who exists? Maybe we don't know about them or we do. That's not what we're talking about today. I think there's other videos made by other YouTubers who have covered that. I instead would like to talk about Tython. So my friend Corey did a video all about Tython today on his lore channel, Corey's Datapad, which I'll link down below. But for this video, I'm not super concerned about that stuff as a basic overview in Star Wars Legends, Tython was basically the birthplace of Force-sensitive orders in the galaxy, both the Jedi and the Sith indirectly. Beings were brought to Tython by the mysterious Tho Yor very early on at the beginning of recorded history. And yeah, from that point on, it basically stood as a legendary planet in the Deep Core. Now, some of that has also been brought over to Star Wars canon, although Tython hasn't been an incredibly important planet. We do know that the first Jedi Temple was on Tython, and and again, that is a legendary planet in the deep core. So it's the deep core thing that I really want to talk about today. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we got a bit about the sectors of the Star Wars galaxy taught to us by that school teacher on Navarro. There are two reasons why I think traveling to Tython in the deep core offers some really exciting opportunities and some really, really dangerous situations. Let's talk about the first one, and that is the status of the deep core and how that area of space generally has been described in the Star Wars universe. All right, so what is the Deep Core? Well, it's the area of space at the very center of the galaxy. So there's the core. That's where very populous and civilized planets like Coruscant and Corellia can be found. The Deep Core, however, is even further inward. However, it's far less mapped and populated than the core areas because of the inherent danger and mystery of the Deep Core. Now, I've done an entire video on this, but I'll just give some basics here. The Deep Core being the center of the galaxy is packed with stars, many of which are unstable or placed closely together. Most of what we know about the Deep Core does come from Star Wars Legends, and I'll talk about that in just a second, but even in canon, the area of space is known to be dangerous and very difficult to navigate. Faster than light travel takes place in a sort of parallel dimension to real space, known as hyperspace, and objects in real space, like planets or moons or stellar bodies, cast a shadow into hyperspace, which can be deadly. So the volatile nature of the deep core, the constantly moving bodies, makes it very, very difficult to travel, and there are only a few established hyperspace lanes, and that's more true the further deep you go into the core. So in Legends, we really just know more about the danger. Many of the Emperor's hidden bases and redoubts were hidden in the deep core. The best example of that would be Biss, where his cloning chambers were set up and where his most secretive research took place. The Emperor also had exclusive hyperspace routes through the deep core which weren't known to outsiders, and the region of space was generally impenetrable because the Empire alone had the ability to map the constantly changing hyperspace routes and keep knowledge of what was safe. In reference to Tython specifically, we actually see Darth Bane attempt to navigate to that planet in Star Wars Legends in the Bane trilogy, and the route is very difficult, it's exhausting even for the Sith Lord, and really only possible because of his immense power. I think there is a bit of a question regarding how close 
closely, The Mandalorian will stick with both canon and legends when it comes to their depiction of the Deep Core. But if I were to trust any show to get that right, well, it would be The Mandalorian, especially given how much that show focuses on the Razor Crest just getting knocked around a bunch. Anyway, the sort of stellar aspects of the Deep Core are only one element that make Tython interesting. There's also the fact that traveling to Tython will be probably for the first time in the show's history, the Mandalorian moving outside or rather inside his space that he's been operating in. He'll be moving away from the Outer Rim and into the galaxy itself. The Mandalorian has really played up the fact, especially in the Tatooine episodes, that the New Republic has really done nothing for the Outer Rim. Criminals are everywhere. You get the occasional X-Wing flying through, but not a whole lot more than that. But as we move towards the core and the deep core, the Mandalorian is traveling really to the heart of the Republic. I mean, the protocol droid even explicitly says that, yeah, at this point, Chandrilla is in the core. I think it's very, very likely that the Mandalorian is going to have some sort of tangle with the New Republic. We've had that one plot line this season of the Mando being chased by those two New Republic pilots, and I think that's probably going to continue. But what's more, the Mandalorian is constantly being involved in things involving New Republic assets. His ship is frequently flagged on New Republic computer systems, so it's really setting up, I think, some sort of confrontation, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get a mission or an episode where the Mandalorian is trying to find somebody who could help him make his way into the center of the galaxy. But this is also exciting, because the more we move away from the Outer Rim, the more distinct and interesting locations I think we will get. I mean, a lot of the Outer Rim is pretty similar. There's lots of small towns. There aren't as many, you know, gleaming metropolises or whatever else. But the further you move in towards civilization, the more different things will become. I mean, I doubt Tython is any sort of glittering city, but the Mandalorian could easily stop somewhere more coreward to try to find an ally or somebody who can help him sneak in past New Republic security. It would also be very cool if at this point we got to see some power of the New Republic. Maybe we get to see some starships. My dream, of course, would be to see something like a Starhawk in live action. I don't think that's necessarily very likely, but I wouldn't be surprised if we at least see a cruiser or something Star Destroyer sized, perhaps representing kind of overwhelming New Republic military firepower that the Mandalorian just is not going to be able to sneak by. I think that would also make for a fun kind of mid episode before we get to Tython. I've got no clue what's going to happen in episode six, I guess we're at now, which is kind of scary. In episode six, every single shot from the trailers has made its way into the TV show. Nothing is sort of outstanding or being hinted at. So the story possibilities are endless and that's really exciting. But guys, that's all I have for you today. Until next time, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Be safe. And may the force be with you.